hello so we'll continue our discussion on computer networks and internet protocol uh, and uh, last uh, couple of lectures we were talking about data link layer uh, as uh, we know that is a layer 2 uh, in the uh, osi stack also in uh, uh, tcp ip stack also it is in the layer 2 in some of the tcp ip stack people put uh, physical layer and data link layer together nevertheless it is a it is in the layer 2 devices right so uh, we have also discussed that uh, the switches or layer 2 switches has these properties that it can open up packets up to layer 2 and take a call based on the thing right and uh, also in the layer 2 we understand that it is a it divides the call and domain but uh, still works in the same uh, broadcast domain and another point that any 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 routing protocol once the route is specified when the routing path is uh, is found out by this routing protocol then this then when the packet moves by hop to hop it need to resolve the next uh, next location or the next hop uh, destination by uh, resolving the ip to this layer 2 address or mac address right and also we have seen that there are two predominant uh, we can uh, sub layer or we can divide into sub layer one is the llc which takes care of the connectivity with the upper layer or the negotiation with the upper layer and the another major part is this mac Huh. medium access control which uh, which basically takes care of the uh, connectivity with the media and there is a unique addressing of the mac address some uh, also known as hardware address also known as network address which comes with the network interface card so today uh, what we will be discussing a one of the predominant protocol protocol in the layer 2 which is more or less omnipresent across the across the all networks in the world uh, that is the predominant protocol of ethernet right so initially we may talk about this uh, some other uh, that aloha protocol for one or two slides and then we will go to the ethernet basic features right? so what we are talking about shared network address right so that means shared network access assume multiple nodes on the same physical link right it can be bus ring wireless structure whatever so but we on a physical link there are several networks Transmission sent by one node is received by all other nodes, right? No intermediate switches are uh, required. So, that is within that uh, what we say reach of all the nodes and received by all the nodes as we are telling that is in the same broadcast domain. Uh, so, method of moderating uh, the access is the is through the MAC protocols and which uh, primary look as the fairness and the performance. So, it is fair to all nodes and it able to utilize this. Uh, means bandwidth in a appropriate uh, uh, way and also we know that it should be somewhat simple to implement otherwise uh, putting onto devices with low resource etc uh, we cannot put uh, resource hungry algo and type of things now uh, if we look at the random access mac protocol when node has uh, packet to send transmit at full channel rate r no a priori coordination among the nodes so whenever the it needs to send it sends on a full rate right no coordination between things so randomly access the uh, channel two or more transmitting nodes if they are there at the same time there may be a, a possibility of collision once the collision is there there should a mechanism should come up and it there should be a retransmission or whatever some action need to be taken so, random access uh, MAC protocol specifies how to detect collision. So, there should be a way to detect collision and how to recover from collision. It may be uh, via one of the popular thing is the delayed retransmission. So, it retransmission after some time. So, and uh, examples of random access MAC protocols one uh, that uh, from long back like 60s or in uh, early 70s is the Aloha. There is a variant of this of slotted Aloha and these days what we look at is CSMA or CSMA CD right or uh, rather uh, we have more things on the things nevertheless uh, what we see is the ethernet is predominantly traditional ethernet is predominantly uh, ruling the whole networking and it is on CSMA CD. So, Aloha basic approach is the first random MAC developed 
for radio based communication in Hawaii in 1970, right? Early means late 60s and early 70s, means 1970. So, basic idea when you are ready, transmit. So, there is no, no question of uh, looking at the channel whether it is busy or somebody is using. Receiver sends a acknowledgement for data, detects and collision by timing out of timing out of technology. So, you, if you do not receive the acknowledgement within time, so there is a uh, collision or there is a loss of the packet. Recover from the collision is trying trying to uh, trying after random delay. So, too short large number of collision if it is too long underutilized channel. So, these are the basic basic overall philosophy of the thing. And if you look at the network uh, all over network developed by Norm uh, Abramson at University of Hawaii to use with packet radio network. Any station can send data at any time, receiver sends an acknowledgement, same thing. If there is a collision, sender will resend the data after a random back off, right. So, utilization that means how much channel is utilized, fraction of transmitted frames avoiding collision for n nodes is pretty bad uh, or pretty low. So, maximum utilization is 18 percent, right. So, it is uh, if, if we you will at some point of time we will try to look at the calculations or rough calculations to see that. So, it is around 18 percent whereas, slotted aloha uh, dividing transmit time into windows help. So, maximum utilization. So, even in the case of subtle turnover the utilization time increases little bit to 36 percent, uh, but better than aloha. So, this was the first card thing, but we need to remember it is they are in 1970, right? Uh, late 60s, 1970. So those type of uh, vision was there. And what we see that our present day thing, what we came up later on, is based on this basic philosophy. So in case of slotted alloa, time is divided into equal size uh, slots. That is packets transmission time, right? So slots uh, node without packet transmit at beginning of next slot, right. So, the node which you want to send with packets you not have the packets to be sent and beginning of the next slot. So, it is on the slots it transmit if collision we transmit packet in future slot with probability p until successful. So, it is it is not like that any time transmission it is on the uh, on the slotted. So, there are it is divided into slot and whenever the things comes it node transmit on that particular slot. So, in case of pure aloha, uh, unslotted aloha simply are no synchronization. So, when we look at the pure aloha there is no synchronization that means no slotting or type of things. Packet needs uh, transmission sent without awaiting for the beginning of slot or anything like that. Once it goes, it goes on the things. So, collision probability obviously increases much. Uh, packet sent at T0 you see at this uh, in this figure. Uh, collide with other packets send in T 0 minus 1, T 0 plus 1, right. So, um, so it can collide with uh, the other uh, packets at sending at other uh, time interval also, right. So, there is a in case of pure aloha it is uh, once ready send it type of things. If there is a collision wait for some time and retransmit. Now, we come to that our ethernet. So, this is the very first uh, uh, hand drawn figure of uh, ethernet sketch of uh, Metcafe. So, the first practical local area network built at Xerox Park in 1970s, right? In 70s, dominant land technology, it is cheap, kept with a speed race 10, 100. 1000 Mbps. So, 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps and 1 Gbps Ethernet and uh, started in 1970s. So, there is a this is a very popular picture you will find in several books and other uh, several resources internet resources and type of things. So, this was the uh, initial sketch of the thing like where interfacing a particular stage interface controller a trans receiver connecting or tapping to the uh, that backbone of the ether and there can be several other uh, devices which is connecting to the things. So, there is a there are a terminator and anybody can means any any of the device can connect to this 
particular backbone of the ether, right. So, that was the philosophy and make a big change because now you have a shared media on a on a single bus or ether. So, uh, one uh, issue with the Ethernet Mac is the carrier sense. So, basic idea is they listen to the wire before you transmit, right? Whether somebody is there, avoid collision with uh, active transmission, right? Uh, so, um, avoid collision with active transmission if there is things. So, why what was not in Aloha? Uh, primarily, Aloha is a packet switch network. So, in wireless, relevant uh, contention at the receiver is not on at the sender right. So, at the receiver end. So, there can be a problem of hidden terminal in this case where the, the one terminals are hidden or it can be exposed terminal the, this uh, this both terminals are exposed and get the thing. So, there can be a hidden terminal problem or a exposed terminal problem and uh, it may not be feasible to uh, to have all those you can listen and before transmit. So, multiple uh, access method. So, when what there are uh, approaches one is the fixed assignment like uh, partition channel into each node gets a slice of the bandwidth. So, I, I uh, the channel is partition. So, it has it nodes has his own partition essentially some sort of a circuit switch thus inefficient like if you uh, if you are not transmitting then also it is the, the slot is allotted and type of things. So, it is uh, inefficient. CDMA, FDMA, CDMA all used wireless and cellular environments are examples of this type of fixed assignments. There is a contention based nodes contents equally for the bandwidth and recover from the collision. So, this where our uh, this Aloha or uh, Ethernet is based on and this is the thing. So, everybody content for the uh, channel and uh, look for the uh, means and whence it is free it transmit if there is a collision there is a process of recovering from the collision or retransmission of the data into the channel. Token based uh, or reservation based is another thing that is the uh, take turns using the channels and that is uh, that uh, token ring is one of the uh, example in previous lecture uh, we have discussed that uh, when mm, the node which holds the token has the right to transmit the uh, or take charge of the channel type of thing. So, our main uh, intention or my main goal of the thing is look at the contents and best uh, or uh, things so which is the ethernet. So, coming back to ethernet. So, background is uh, something developed on Bob uh, Metcalfe on uh, and others in Xerox Park uh, in mid 70s. Uh, routes in Aloha packet uh, radio network that is primarily standardized by Xerox, DEC and Intel in 1978 and uh, LAN standards uh, define MAC and physical layer connectivity, right. So, there are several standards we have already seen uh, that is uh, 802.3 the CSMA CD Ethernet that standard originally it was 2 Mbps, uh, then we have the 10 Mbps. Uh, IEEE 802.3U is the 100 Mbps uh, Ethernet, uh, IEEE 802.3Z is the 1 Gbps or 1000 Mbps Ethernet, right. And the basic protocol is CSMA CD uh, Ethernet uh, that media access and control uh, MAC policy CS uh, we as you know that CS is the carrier sense sent only if the medium in idle. So, it sends the carrier and see that whether if it is idle. MA is the multiple access. So, carrier sends multiple access with collision detection, stop sending immediately after if the collision is detection, send a jam signal. So, that the other uh, participating nodes understand there is a collision and then go for a retransmission of the things. So, that is the uh, basic uh, philosophy of this uh, slotted aloha. Hey, it is not sorry that is the CSMA CD uh, sorry that CSMA CD that is what we use in this ethernet and this is the again the picture comes back the same uh, picture. So, uh, the ethernet technology is uh, that the initial thing was the 10 base 2 10 uh, 
was that 10 Mbps to is around less than 200 meters cable length is permissible. So, thin coaxial cable in a bus topology it was there repeater used to connect multiple segments of such table repeater repeats bits it is here on the interface to the on other. So, it is a physical repeater is a physical layer phenomena layer 1 phenomena which primarily increase the signal strength or in other uh, terms we can say it increases the SNR or signal to noise ratio. So, it amplifies the signal. So, if you if the permitted length is 200 meters effectively around 180 meters. So, after that you require a repeater to increase the signal strength so that it goes on the uh, on the rest of the uh, um, on the again another segment of 180 meters or 200 meters right. So, and as we know that we are uh, that uh, that popular hub uh, which is also a layer 1 device is uh, primarily a multi port repeater. Uh, so, if it is hub is typically 4 port, 8 port, 16 port hub, but they have the same uh, collision and broadcast domain. So, the effective bandwidth is pretty low. Uh, so, the inverse case it is divided by the number of ports it is having right. So, that is the basic thing. So, what we see that there is a cable here and these are all uh, tapped right. So, uh, thin coaxial bus repeater used to connect the multiple segment and there is a uh, cable. So, there are node uh, there are several nodes which are tapped into the thing. So, there are these are all T connectors right. Some of you might have seen there are T connectors where these cables are connected and this things are there. So, transmit packet travels in both direction. So, this is the T uh, connector and then we are the terminator at the end and there are adapter at the thing. So, this adapter basically connect this uh, machine or the node. Hmm. So, that is the interface between this uh, uh, this is the network adapter which connects the things right. So, uh, then it came that 110 oblique 100 Mbps rate with uh, twisted pair. So, initially if you see it is 10 base 2, this is 10 base T and 10 base 100 base T. So, T stands for twisted pair, hubs connected by twisted pair facilitate start topology type of thing. So, there is a hub sorry, there is a hub and there are uh, these are the different uh, connections and again hub connectivity etcetera. Though effective bandwidth goes on decreasing, but I we can have a star start type of topology right. So, so this is the uh, structure by which the 10 base 2. So, here again 10 stands for the Mbps and uh, T is the twisted pair. Typical length of twisted pair is around not more than 100 meters rather effectively it is less than 100 meter around 80 90 meters up to which this test twisted pair is can run. We will come to this physical layer uh, config physical layer uh, consideration later, but just to uh, as a continuity of 802.3 physical layer configurations are specified in three parts either data uh, in data rate 10 100 thousand signaling rate whether it is a base band or broadband signal base band is the digital signaling broadband is the analog signaling and this cabling right there are different specification 5 for thick coax coaxial cable f for fiber optic s for short wave laser through multi mode channel l for long wave laser to single mode channel and so and so forth right and uh, already we have seen 2 and t uh, what they stand for So, Ethernet is defined by a broadcast protocol any signal can be received by all hosts. So, it is a uh, same broadcast domain switched enable individual host to communicate. So, that the collision noise is, uh, is fragmented or divided and network layer packets are transmitted over an Ethernet by encapsulating uh, by encapsulating. So, that means that uh, this is our typical frame format where we have a preamble of uh, 64 bit destination address 48 bit source address 48 bit there is a type field of 16 bit this is the body of the message and there is a 32 bit CRC check 
right. So, this is a typical size of Ethernet, uh, typical format of Ethernet, uh, a Ethernet frame. So, when we have a switch network, uh, there are several uh, features or advantages, right. Switches forward and filter frames based on the LAN addresses or MAC addresses or hardware addresses or network addresses, whatever you tell. So, based on that, switches forward and filters the frames. It is not a bus or a router, although simple forwarding tables are maintained. So, it switches as a uh, layer 2 switch, what we are talking about layer 2 switch as a table, and based on that, so if I have a 8 port switch, then it forwards packets based on the uh, based on the data it is received uh, based on the destination port. So, in other sense the collisions are uh, collision domains are divided or we are avoiding this collisions in this uh, in, in when we connect it to the switch. So, it is very scalable like uh, unlike hub where the it is in the same broadcast and collision domain here it is different collision domain very scalable options for many interfaces. Uh, full duplex operation send received frames simultaneously right. So, it can as a full duplex op operation so that I, I do not have those type of collision scenario. So, connect two or more segments uh, by copying data frames between them right. So, I can even connect two or more segments with the with the switch right. Switches only copy packets when needed key difference from the repeaters right. So, repeaters is primarily only signal enhancing or amplification of the signal, so that it is transmitted whereas, switch divides the collision domain. So, you can have different collision domain and that is why the effective bandwidth is much higher than here and not only that scalability is there, you can connect cascade switch uh, in a much better way than, than hub or repeaters. Higher link bandwidth collisions are completely avoided. So, you have a higher as we are talking about higher uh, link bandwidth or better utilization of link bandwidth, much greater aggregate bandwidth separate segments can send uh, at once. So, that uh, I can have uh, when we aggregate the all this uh, bandwidth then we have a much better aggregate bandwidth when we have a uh, separate segment connected over the switch. Now, coming to the Ethernet frames, uh, so preamble is a sequence of 7 uh, bytes uh, or and is set to 10101010. So, just to uh, remind here, uh, so we have a uh, this preamble of this used to synchronize receiver before actual data is uh, transmitted. And, uh, address is a unique 48 bit unique uh, unicast address assigned to each adapter right. So, uh, of the form of x x y x x colon x x colon x x and this form. So, we have a uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5. So, we have a total 48 6 into 8 there is a 1 I believe 1 is missing. So, it should be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 into 8. So, I have a 48 byte a 48 bit unicast address for each adapter. Each manufacturer gets his own address range. So, that means, whatever uh, adapter is uh, manufactured is uh, uh, adapter are manufactured as a unique uh, addresses. That means, ideally or whatever interface card we are connecting with this our network has this separate addressing. So, all all network interfaces or adapter across the world are unique, though there are uh, issues of cloning of this uh, adapter etcetera. We are not again as I mentioned earlier also we are not going to the those uh, challenges and complications but we this is the basic philosophy right. So, broad in case of a broadcast all one in case of multicast first bit is one right. So, this is the way we look at it type field uh, is a demultiplexing key used to determine which level of protocol the frame should be delivered to right. 
so this is a which which signifies that at which level of higher le which which higher level protocol this particular frame will be delivered to body can contain up to 1500 bytes like the payload can be after up to 1500 bytes and finally we have a crc of 32 bit Now, in ALOA decisions to transmit uh, are made without paying attention to what the other nodes might be doing. Right? So, that means, you are once you are ready you transmit. Ethernet uses CSMA CD listens to line before during sending the data. Right? If line is idle no carrier is sensed. Right? Send packet immediately, upper bound size is 1500 bytes, must have 9.6 microsecond between the back to back frames. Right. So, if the line is busy carrier sensed that means, carrier is sensed that somebody is uh, someone is transmitting wait until the transmit packet uh, uh, wait uh, wait until idle and transmit packet immediately. This is also known as one persistent sending. So, wait wait until the it is the is idle and transmit packet immediately without looking at it. If collision detected, stop sending and send jam signal, try later again. Right. So, this is the basic philosophy. This some form we have seen earlier also that basic state diagram of CSMA CD. So, the packet sends carrier, uh, if it is uh, send, if detect send, yes, then the jam signal, calculate the back off time, wait for B and go on. If attempt is less than 16, again carrier sends if equal to 16 discard packet and go on like this right so this is uh, uh, this is the way it goes on if packet is there it is sensed and type of things so you sense the carrier and then go on transmitting the thing right so this is the way to go on uh, working on the thing right so first of all if i want to send the packet sense the uh, carrier if the carrier is free, send it. If there is a collision, if it detected, then wait for send jam signal, wait for a back off time. If attempt is less than 16, uh, go and against the sense the carrier. If attempt is equal to 16, then discard the packet. So, collisions are caused when two adapters transmit at the same time, right. Adapter sends collision based on the voltage differences. So, there is there is voltage. Uh, based on the voltage differences, it sends that whether there is a collision or not. Both found uh, line to be idle, right. In this case, say A, B, both found that line to be idle at that time. Both had been waiting for a busy line to become idle and then they transmit. A transmit at time 0, message almost there at time T, B starts collision, right. So, this is this is the way a collision can happen and there should be a uh, retransmission. How can we be sure that A knows about the collision? Uh, so, one way is that either that voltage difference and uh, sort of things or uh, if it is uh, knows about the collision takes place there must be a mechanism to ensure retransmission on collision right. A's message reaches B at time t, B's message reaches time uh, A at time 2 t right. So, so A must wait till transmitting uh, still be transmitting at time 2 t. So, after typically max time of 2 t A comes to know whether there is a collision or not. So, 802.3 specify max value of 2 t to be 51.2 microsecond. This relates to a maximum distance of 1500 meters between the hosts, right. If we consider that uh, um, speed, the speed of wave and transmission, so it is around 1500 meters between the host, considering that cable etcetera where you cannot uh, get that what is in the vacuum, so around 60 percent of the speed you will be achieving. So, at 10 Mbps it takes 0.1 microsecond to transmit 1 bit, so 51 2 bit that is 64 bytes takes 51.2 microsecond to send right. So, ethernet frame must be at least 64 byte long, 54 byte header, 
46 eh, sorry 14 byte header 46 byte data and 4 byte crc so that is the basic thing if padding is used if the data is less than 46 byte correct so so we have this uh, thumb thumb rule calculation so 8023 specifies that 2t to be 51.2 microsecond this relates to 1500 meter between the host if 10 mbps takes 0.1 microsecond to transmit 1 bit so uh, at 10 mbps it takes 0.1 microsecond to transmit 1 bit so 512 or 64 byte takes 51.2 microsecond to send right so ethernet frame must be at least 64 byte long 14 byte header 46 byte data and 4 byte crc so if it is less than your uh, data is less than 46 byte then padding should be used so sending jam signal after collision is detected to ensure all host collis uh, are uh, see the collision so it is a 48 bit signal which is a jam signal is sent so this is the collision uh, detection after time 2t and then we have a exponential back off if collision is detected delay and try again delay time is selected based on the binary exponential back off first time choose k from 0 1 and delay equal to k into 51.2 microsecond second time choose k from this set 0 1 2 3 k into so and so forth and nth time choose from uh, 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 so no the maximum value of allowable k is 1023 to give up after several tries usually 16 once the trial is 16 gives up and report a error to the host if delay is not random then there is a chance that the source would retransmit in the lock state so why not uh, choose small set of uh, set for k this is fine it works fine if the number of hosts are less so if you have a less number of hope then small k will work fine if the number of hosts are pretty large then this uh, there will be a chance of more, more collision so uh, this is the basic philosophy of uh, our uh, basic ethernet which uses csma cd uh, uh, primarily and so what we will uh, what we have seen that that it is a carrier sense and detection and then retransmission after a back of time what it is doing there are some uh, uh, baseline what we say arithmetic which uh, tells us that what should be the size of the thing we will continue our discussion in the next lecture with the ethernet and uh, other uh, um, variation of this uh, or on the data link layer so uh, let us conclude our discussion for this particular uh, lecture and we will continue in the subsequent lecture. Thank you.